Thank you, Mr. Blakey. Uh, we are moving to the Conservatives. We have uh, Mr. Patzer. Welcome, Mr. Patzer. Thank you very much, Chair. It's, a, it's an honor to be able to join this committee today. Uh, my questions are going to be for uh, Mr. Terrazano. Uh, in Bill C-8, which is a, an act to implement certain provisions of the economic and fiscal update, um, there's a provision to the Income Tax Act to introduce a new refundable tax credit to return fuel charge proceeds to farming businesses in backstop jurisdictions. Uh, I'm just wondering if you've had a chance to look at that, what your thoughts are on, on that system and if it's essential to have in place. I have not seen that specific proposal, but um, I mean, we do hear from a, a lot of farmers, a lot of businesses that the additional taxes, carbon taxes, fuel taxes are really uh, a pain. We've put out analysis that shows, depending on the province, between 31 to 42 percent of the pump price comes through taxes. So one thing we would like to see is some tax relief during the pandemic. We've seen a number of other countries around the world. We've seen Spain, France, they're reducing electricity taxes. We've seen South Korea reduce their gas tax by 20 percent so we've seen other countries provide their citizens with relief but unfortunately we've seen ottawa uh, stick their constituents with a higher tax bill and if i'm not mistaken that's supposed to only increase on uh, april 1st and no it's not an april fool's joke um <laughs> do farmers actually get back more than they pay in carbon taxes in canada well, you know, I've, I've heard that thrown around sometimes, but it's really magic math to think that the government is going to hammer us with a tax, then somehow make people better off. The, the truth of the matter is that the carbon tax is causing a ton of pain. So are booze taxes, which continue to go up. So are payroll taxes, which continue to go up. The first rule of government during a pandemic should be first do no harm. But as you mentioned, the carbon tax is set to increase to the third time during the pandemic. Um, it's supposed to continue to go up all the way to 2030 to where it's nearly 40 cents per liter. Also, we have a second carbon tax coming in through few regulations. And you mentioned a rebate, rebate, but as far as I'm aware, there is absolutely no rebate with the second carbon tax, which could add another 11 cents per liter to the price of gasoline. Unbelievable. The one of your recommendations that you have for the government is to end the gun ban and buyback program. Yes. I'm just wondering if you had a chance to do a fiscal analysis on that and what your what what, what you actually are projecting that that's going to cost the taxpayer to on, on what a buyback program is going to look like. Well, thank you for that question, members. So the parliamentary budget officer has done a partial analysis, and it could cost 756 million dollars, but. That's just a partial cost. That's only to reimburse uh, the, the gun owners. We, we have seen analysis done by a professor at Simon Fraser University who says that, well, the biggest cost hasn't even been factored in, and, and that's administration, that's staffing, which could add billions of dollars onto the price tag. And not only is it going to be expensive, but we've heard from the officers who are charged with protecting us on the front lines, the largest uh, police union in Canada. I just like to read a quote. The NPF said that the gun grab, it's not going to address, quote, current and emerging themes or urgent threats to public safety. And even worse, the gun grab and buyback could make Canada less safe because it's diverting resources from actually uh, cracking down on crime to targeting law abiding Canadian citizens. One other recommendation that you have that is of particular interest to me because I hear about it on a daily basis from my constituents is to phase out equalization. I would just like to yes. you to comment on that one further. That's correct. Uh, we have a we have a 20 apologies. I'm getting um, noise. We have a 20 year plan to phase out equalization over those 20 years. Next year, the prov some provinces would still get $19 billion. But one of the key concerns, I'm from Calgary. That's where, that's where I lived over the last few years. It's just so unfair. I mean, really, how many more Albertans need to lose their job before Ottawa understands that a $650 per person bill for Albertans is just too much through equalization. But it's not just Albertans that it's harming. Also, the, the residents of Newfoundland and Labrador Labrador, this is how absurd the program is, is that under equalization, they're considered a have province, but then you still have the federal government doing backdoor bailouts to that province. So we, we do think that equalization does need to be phased out over 20 years.